I'm very glad to make it this week. I watched the last two and they were super helpful. So thank you for recording those. Ah, and I just I caught you, I caught you on recording saying that. So yeah. the next person who watches this recording is going to say, oh, that really smart and pretty woman said that these first two were great. So I'm going to watch those two. Is it? Good. I, I got the first one. You sent it out in the email on July 6th during the day, but I didn't get this recording of the one on July 6th. Well, I don't I'll, know. I'll send the links out again. Okay. I, I kind of hate to send two reminders in a week because that just gets to be annoying. So, and now we have an, a different land, the land of Zoom meetings. <laughs> well, that, that's the land of Toastmasters. We own yeah. Zoom. <laughs> this is a COVID world. We just live in it. <laughs> Uh, well, I just find I finally subscribed to uh, paid the money and and bought a Zoom account for myself because there's enough meetings that I have and Toastmasters meetings and things like that that I wanted to make sure that I that I had an account and now I'm I'm concerned. I have some questions about um, whether or not if I own the account and I start the meeting. Can I leave the meeting and have the meeting keep going on without me? You have to pass the uh, host to someone else. I have to pass the host to someone else. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if you go into the participants tab mm -hmm. when you're the host, and I, I'm not the host on this. You see, I, I have to do this on my work computer. So the, the account is through my work computer, but... I've got my Mac with the beautiful camera. Look at how good I look, everybody. Mm -hmm. You look great. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so I'm not going to use my crummy laptop, but that's the one that actually has the account. Anyway, if you go to participants, you'll, you'll see one of your options, under, with the three dot menu, when you hover over a person, is to make that person a host or a co-host. Oh, okay. Hmm. A co-host can do everything except create breakout rooms or a couple of other things. But yeah, when you leave, if you make somebody else the host, they can keep it going. They can, and, and then when they hang up, then the meeting closes. Right. They will have the ability to pass the host on. Pass. So if you had people on your call from around the world, your Zoom chat would never have to end. Mm. Right. Well, that's good to know. <laughs> you have a, I, I understood that I had a 24 hour limit on a Zoom call, but I suppose that doesn't take into consideration time zones. Well, I, I didn't know there was a 24 hour limit. If there's a 24 hour limit, then of course it'll cut off. And oh my God, what do you do then? Dial in again. Yeah. Dial in again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've never heard of that either before. Yeah. And when I signed up for it, they said that uh, instead of limiting the free account, you have 40 minutes or right. you know, 45 minutes. So, but the paid account, you have unlimited, um, you know, literally, you know, they, it said unlimited, they said 24 hours in a day, 24 hours. Well, I have to say I'm pleased about two things. One, we still get new people on the call, so that's great. And two, that's good. we have a lot of people coming back, which means we must be doing something right. I like that. Uh, the strangest name on the screen is someone named Danville Am. If you can find out who that is, they can change it. They can change their name. All right. Well, it's good to see... Dwayne, Danville. Matthew, back again, Larry, of course. And now we have Jenna. And Jenna, you get to be our guinea pig of the night. You get to tell us what is confusing you about the vice president of education role and the smartest people in the district are going to tell you exactly what you should do or you'll tell them. We'll find out. Okay. So the biggest challenge in my club is not necessarily logistics. I think you cleared up a lot of my logistical questions in the first two uh, sessions that we've done here. But I have a small club 
like 12 to 15 members and a lot of seasoned Toastmasters and we have a high turnover because we're on Cal's campus. So it comes and goes with finals and students graduating and things like that. Our retention is not tremendous. It's not terrible, but it's not great. And the biggest thing is we don't have a pathways culture in our club at all. And I would like to know the best way to get people excited about it because we did a survey of kind of gauging club interest and on a scale of one to five, pretty much everyone's at a three. They're not super jazzed. How do I get them excited? Okay. I talk too much in these calls, so I want to hear from other people, and then I want to talk too much. How, how are other people getting people excited about the Pathways program? I have the same problem. Oh. I'm interested in finding the answer to that thing, too. Well, we were kind of a guinea. We, we were one of the first to adopt Pathways, I think, in Heart to Heart. I'm, I'm VP of Heart to Heart. And we were have been already doing it for about a year. So I guess everybody kind of, it was a gradual thing. I think everybody kind of just started uh, segueing into it. And I think one of the things is if you have anybody that's in Pathways in your group celebrating their level, like if they've completed level one, make a big deal about, hey, so-and-so, you know, just got their level one award. Yay, let's make a big deal about that. Other than that, I don't know. It seems like the younger people would be really excited about it because it's all on the computer and it's, I don't know, it's a little bit hard to get around in there. But, um, you know, you don't have to have any manuals. You just have the program at your fingertips. I don't know. Do you know what, what about it is that is that exciting then? I'm gonna I my think answer. part of it is lack of exposure. The previous VPE acknowledged that he was a terrible VPE because he's not the biggest fan of Pathways. He's someone that liked the old system and is kind of grumbly about Pathways and stepped away from it. So there hasn't been a lot of positive talk surrounding Pathways. It's been kind of ho-hummy. But also, like I said, it's just not part of our culture. I think I am one of two or three people who are actually following a path. And it looks like they, some of them have signed up for Pathways and at least looked at it and then decided not to pursue it. Okay, Let, let's be real clear about one thing. The people that will tell you, oh, I liked the old system, I don't like the new system, take a look at their educational achievements. Do these people have their advanced communicator gold? Are they DTMs? I'm not sure how far Dan got, but I know he did make it through level five of his pathways path. Oh, that's good. So he did, he did it. He just didn't care much for it. <laughs> well, good for him. I, I give him kudos. Absolutely. Yeah. But uh, the other members in your club, how far have they gotten in the old system? I'm, I'm not sure, to be right. honest. I've only been in this club for about a year. Okay. I think you would know, having been there a year, if these are people who have completed their advanced communicator silver, advanced communicator gold, are they great speakers? They're, they're good speakers. I wouldn't say they're phenomenal, but they're better than average. Okay. That's, that's good. That's good. You see, you're, this is not a, a complete disaster that you're working with. No. Uh, the sad story right now for people that don't like pathways is Toastmasters is all about pathways. Yeah. If you don't like Pathways... Might as well quit Toastmasters. Yeah, you, you do not like Toastmasters. You don't like the Toastmasters <laughs> educational program, because that's yeah. what it is. But the fact is, there is a train that has come through. The train is named Pathways. Some people got on the train, and they're sailing along. Some people stayed back at the station. And some people want to stand in the middle of the tracks. But whichever place you choose to be, the train's going through. And so this is the time to get on board. And if you really can't get the club on board, well, it's time for the club to become a social club. Because they're not going to be an educational club, not in the model of Toastmasters International. So that's, that's the hard truth. Telling people to suck eggs is probably not the best way to motivate and inspire people. That's, that's right. There, there's got to be a better way. Uh, my club 
has been rescued from the brink. And so everybody's new. Nobody knows how to use Pathways. We, we've never seen it before. Everybody's looked at it. Everybody is actually enrolled. Uh, it's like Annabelle was saying, it's, it's clunky. It's difficult to navigate. You get stuck and you have to log out and log back in. And it's not, you know, a lot of my people are older, so they're not born to the computer culture. I haven't figured it out yet. I'm hoping to learn from this training that's coming up because I never got any training. So it's been a challenge. Uh, my tack has been to talk about why are we here? We're trying to learn how to communicate. I am fortunate in that I've got well over 20 years of off and on Toastmasters, but probably three decades. So I can go up and spin a speech off the top oh. of my head and it gives them like, oh, I want to do that. I want to do what you're doing. Well, then I can talk to them about structure, about using gestures, vocal variety, substituting yeah, but for, for uh, ums and ahs. And then we trying to get them motivated to, to do the speeches. People seem to be wanting to go there. Well, yeah. Matthew, that's great. The, the one that like is your, uh, I called it that. Oh, there we go. The, the one okay. twist I, I, I want to hear there is, and so I take them to the pathways lesson and show them the one about vocal variety, the pathways lesson about uh, gestures. Okay. Because they're all there, all of the square in in the various oh. presentation mastery has got the electives. Uh, What's nice is that I, it's I, I, can, I haven't found that yet. I don't know where that is. Third, Why are third. we hiding in the same room? <gasps> Someone shot Jill, out there. Jill. Is it safe? Jill needs to be on mute. There's it's in level three. Um, Go up to level three, you'll see it. It'd be stupid of me if I like accidentally shot. Yeah, Jill? Jill, I'm, I'm sorry, you're going to have to keep on mute. You've got somebody talking in the room. Yeah. It says I'm muted. So, okay, let me, I don't know what else to do. Um, no, no, uh, you, you, right now, go back to mute and you'll be on mute. Okay. There you are. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, and Matthew, obviously, you don't come out with, you know, get on the train or you're left behind, right? But that is the uh, story that you have to tell after you've demonstrated the, the Pathways program, after you've shown people, after you've gotten up and given uh, speeches based on lessons and Pathways. If they still say, gee, that's just not for me, that's fine. They can come, they can pay their money, they can do table topics, but... Everyone else in the club needs to get onto Pathways. Because Pathways is the education. We've had tremendous success attracting people because they feel that we're a very supportive, a supportive group. So I'm just trying to find an alternative to the suck eggs approach. Well, uh, again, now we, we've had a discussion about this, and I want to throw this out to the group. Toastmasters is not the happy talkie club. Toastmasters is an educational organization, and we used to be based on the manuals. Now we're based on pathways. And when people say, I want to go to a club and learn public speaking and leadership skills, they don't say, hey, I've heard Dennis Dawson is a great speaker. I'm going to go to his club. They say, I'm going to go to Toastmasters. So if you hang a shingle outside your door and it says, this is Toastmasters, and people come in, and it's actually Matthew, a very experienced speaker, telling people how to do things the way he learned to do it in Toastmasters, instead of going to the Toastmasters curriculum, then they're not paying for Toastmasters, they're paying for your expertise. Uh, I do tell them every week to go to the Toastmasters curriculum. I reiterate, it's very difficult, clunky, and people are getting lost in there, and I'm not getting participation so but they keep showing up so as long as I keep showing up and they feel it's a supportive environment I'll keep telling them about pathways that's I right send out emails I build my spreadsheets I I encourage them when I do get an email response and I dig through there and I try to come up with an answer for them but it I think you've misread our club entirely 
It's not, it's not that people don't want to do pathways. We haven't figured it out yet. Okay. No, we, but we can't make it work. We're still trying to make it work. Show us how it works. I want to see tutorials. Well, this is, uh, well, again, anytime you want me to come to your club, I've made that offer. Come to your club uh, in a virtual meeting. I'm happy to walk everybody through pathways. Happy to do that. Also, though, this Saturday, uh, there's going to be the VPE training. Sadly, I'm doing the VPE training, but we will talk about pathways there. And then there's a, a second uh, session on pathways where they're going to go really in depth, uh, a one hour session that's going to show you not only how to, I, I believe it's mostly aimed at users of pathways and getting people going. I think there's also going to be some information about how to submit the educational awards. I'm definitely going to cover the vice president education tasks in the vice president education uh, training. Yeah, Matthew. Can I invite my club to, uh, to join this meeting? This, uh, I'm assuming it's Zoom. They can come in, they can watch, they can see how it works. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. have them ready. The good thing about TLI is it's free to everybody and it's for all the members, not just the officers. Yeah, and, and this year, Division G can finally participate. So, yeah. They, is it going to be at the same address as these meetings? No. Uh, the, the link, you need to go to d57tm.org. D57tm.org. 57t? Tm.org. Mr. 57 Toastmasters, so it's, I'll, I'll, I'll put it in the chat. Uh, the other thing they said last night was you want to register because I think they can only have a max of 500 people on the Zoom bridge or something, and they're at 380 already registered. Okay. So just I register, and then you'll have your spot guaranteed. Yeah, I, I hope everybody's going to d57tm.org every now and again to find out what's happening in the district. So yeah, that's where they can all go. They can register. Everybody can participate in uh, the Toastmasters Leadership Institute, whether they're an officer or not. Larry, I'm sorry I interrupted you. Yeah, Dennis, I just wanted to say uh, to Matthew, I said, if you, you think it's clunky now, you should have seen it when it first came out. <laughs> I did. I did. But, uh, you know, we didn't know how to use it then. This is where, where we're at a year on and we still don't know how to use it. I mean, we were yeah. mostly concentrated on, on getting the club back on its feet because we were yeah. we were about to disappear to smoke. So we, we just grabbed the bull by the horns and did manual labor and forced it back into life. But, yeah. I, you know, we you know, I was looking at it. <laughs> I was looking at it. Does anybody figure this out? You tell me how to do it and I'll, I'll be glad to, you know, follow your lead. And I got a couple young people and they couldn't figure it out. So, you know, yeah. we just, we just made it work, you know? So now we got a club, we got people. Um, I hear that you've made improvements. I see more tutorials, but I, you know, I, I don't know how it works. I still haven't figured it out. What? I, uh, I've been I don't know what master. buttons to push. I've been a Toastmaster since 93 and I was, totally against the uh, new system when I first saw it. Uh, but D57 was the first district that uh, started using pathways because I, I personally really like the CC manual and the, and, the, uh, eight and the leadership manual. I just felt like those were really a good way to get a new Toastmaster going. <clears throat> But like Dennis say, we we need to change, and and, uh, and it was really really clunky that first year. Holy Toledo! Well, lots of bugs. Yeah, once but again, now, now I embrace it. So let's not get too nostalgic for the old system. Uh, the worst thing about the CC manual, <laughs> mind you, I did the CC manuals eight times, so obviously I liked them. But yeah, you've done five of them. Uh, yeah, I, I, like I said, 30 years, I've been in and out, in and out, a lot of times starting over. My manuals are in storage. I just not got a quick 10 to get myself back on my feet, back in the program. So, you know, it's a good review. But, but you know the statistics about people actually completing the CC manual? Yeah, really low. 
Fewer than 10% oh, of all Toastmasters ever completed the CC. Fewer than and, the, and those that did thought they were done and they quit the club. Right. right. They thought, okay, I've done with my class. I've graduated. And they, they went on to something else. They said, okay, I, now I'm a competent, co I'm a competent communicator. And, you know, I'd like to be much more than competent. Thank you very I much. That. I did that like 20 <laughs> years ago. I did that 20 years ago. I got yeah. the manual. I thought, oh, I'm done. Nobody told me that you could, well, they probably Continue did. But I wasn't with, yeah. it, it, it's probably improved, <laughs> improved your life and your communication skills and, yeah. and your leadership at work. I mean, it, even that first 10, every, every speech helps. Every speech improves. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what I'm, you know, what's, what people are really enjoying about what we're doing here at our club is, is where we're, everybody gets a shot at speaking and, and uh, they, I'm hearing great speeches out of these guys. They're really good. I mean, they put their heart into it and, it's, and they're, they're, they're performing. And this is where the rubber meets the road. It's repetition. Get out there and do a speech, do a speech, do a speech. You get better and better. Hello, Hans. Hans joined us. <laughs> so, Jenna, how are we doing so far? Have we given you any help or? I mean, yes, but no. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out what's going to motivate them to get involved like i said i think as new i i have a plan for what to do with new members i'm gonna get them started right away and just make it how they do toastmasters but as far as the people that are in the club like like matthew said i don't want to alienate them and be like well this is yes. what we're doing or get out because there's like 12 to 15 of us and we won't have a club anymore uh, well actually that uh, don't jump to that conclusion because in some cases you need to lose a few members in order to bring new members in and keep them. Okay. So don't be afraid of that. Don't okay. go out and try to make it happen. Right. But uh, we definitely in San Jose Toastmasters, we had four or five old codgers that were really holding the club back and we didn't try and uh, get them to leave but what we did was go forward with pathways very uh, enthusiastically. Mm -hmm. and they felt that it, the organization was no longer good for them, but they had actually been keeping kind of a uh, eagle claw on top of the whole club, holding people back. Mm. So don't allow that to happen. Be, be right. nice, but uh, be ready to move forward. Now, I think if I can grab a handful of people, then we can make forward progress in changing the culture, but I, I need a few to work with. Right. Now, do you ever have empty speaking slots? Do you have... No. No, they're always full. For everyone that everyone in the club is very active in the club. Good. Excellent. Like, so it's a small they... club, but everyone's very active. Are all the speeches based on Toastmasters lessons? No, hardly any. Okay, well, that's the first thing uh, you can change as a vice president of education. Okay. Now, you, you program the meetings, and you are the person who assigns the speaking slots. And uh, you start by saying, hey, first preference goes to anybody who is speaking from the Pathways program, because we have to be sure that the people who are working the educational system get the opportunity to earn their educational awards. If we have empty slots left over after that, then people can sign up on an ad hoc basis the day of. Okay. Yeah, Larry. We don't even do that. Uh, we said that uh, right off the bat that if it's not a pathway speech, you're not speaking. Well, that's definitely the way I would do it, but uh, I'm trying to be sensitive to Jenna's club yeah. here. Yeah. Matthew, you, you would agree with that. You can't just make a hard and fast rule right out of the gate, right? Yeah, I would. I, I agree with Jenna. But we did, and the person that... Uh, wanted to give a speech that wasn't in the pathways. It was all grumbly about it then, but then he signed up for another speech that was in pathways and he's in pathways now, so. All right. It's good. There's, there's really no reason that just, if, if somebody wants to do a speech, they can do an icebreaker. They don't have to pay for a path to do an icebreaker from the pathways program. Then that's one way to get them started. Chia, you had a, a comment? Yeah, I, um... 
I took, I, I wanted to thank you, Dennis, for, for doing this um, uh, get together. And I, um, I took a cue from, from this and I started with, with our club a uh, Friday at 4 p.m. Uh, standing, uh, you know, come and ask me questions. And this uh, Zoom thing has been kind of a godsend because you can actually work with people on their screen. And, and so um, I've had uh, two sessions so far. It's not just, and originally it was with the, this idea of, of uh, helping new members select their paths and just uh, getting used to um, uh, free Toast Toast. People often get the two confused, toastmasters.org versus free Toast Toast. And we used, we used free Toast Toast a lot and encourage members to get on there and sign themselves up for, for roles and, uh, and such. But uh, so, so that's been really helpful in just, uh, uh, you know, helping people, uh, uh, you know, select their paths. And it's one thing to send them, you know, that 77 page catalog. <laughs> of all the, no one's going to look at it. And uh, I, I have to confess, the first time I saw pathways and they have all the descriptions of the different paths and it doesn't, it, 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 none of it makes any sense. And the assessment, for, uh, whatever glitch there was in it, it seemed to direct everybody into innovative planning, which is really not a good path for someone just starting out or who just wants to practice speaking because you, you wind up with this high performance leadership project at, at uh, level five and that usually seems to uh, break a lot of people. But anyways, it's, um, it's been a, a really good experience in getting the new people on board. They kind of get excited about it and I thought more of them would just go into uh, presentation mastery, but no, they want to do different things. And, you know, and it could be that a lot of our newer members are younger and uh, well, relatively younger. We, uh, we had a new member who said, oh, I know this stuff, you know, because she's a teacher. And so she's, she was actually very familiar with uh, the Basecamp uh, mm -hmm. platform. And she says, oh, yeah, I got this, no problem. It was just a matter of uh, deciphering uh, pathways uh, and, and the different paths. But now that we were in July and the old guard, they have nothing to go on now. <laughs> they, can't, they can't reach back and do their legacy programs. So now they're sort of catching up and in a way, because the newer folks have been zipping forward, I wouldn't say zipping, but they're, they seem comfortable with using pathways. And it's the, uh, the more um, accomplished or the old, old time members who are now, they're still stuck at level one. Mm -hmm. And no, I think it. there's a little pressure there. Right. So it's working. This is a, a very interesting thing about mentoring. We always think of mentoring as, hey, this experienced person is going to teach this young person how to work the Toastmasters program. But we've got a unique opportunity here for the younger members to show experienced members how to use pathways while the experienced members are showing the younger people the speaking techniques. I, I think it goes both ways. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, we started to, to assign mentors, but it just takes the, me the idea being that uh, it takes uh, the, the new member through the first three speeches. Right, but right. just getting through the first three speeches requires that you register for Pathway and that you know how to sign yourself up and, and, and do evaluations and all that. So it's, uh, so now the uh, the, the people who are officers, who tend to be more of the uh, experienced members, they're, they're signing up for my Friday afternoon session because 
they want to be able to guide their mentees where I think it's actually going to be the other way around. But, you know, sometimes by teaching, well, a lot of times by teaching, you also learn. And so uh, I'm, uh, yeah, so it's a Friday pre-happy hour hour that we have, and I think it's going to work. So um, thank you, Dennis, for giving I me think, a little hint here. <laughs> thank you, Chia. I think that's a wonderful idea. I'm trying to figure out a way to sort of, uh, as Jenna was saying, get people more enthused. And rather than not get their questions answered, perhaps having a separate meeting just to, you know, uh, just for vice president of education question and answer team mm -hmm. for an hour once a week would be a good idea. I, I don't know about Friday afternoon. We still have people who have work jobs in my club. I don't. So I could do, you know, Friday at 4 p.m. But we'll, we have to work some time that's going to be convenient for everybody. I just um, I, think, that, I think it's a wonderful uh, idea. Great. Yeah, I, I just told them that hey, if you if no one shows up, I'm just gonna go and have my margaritas. That's wonderful. <laughs> yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, if yeah. you got a, if you got an address to, to to log into, I mean any anything that can teach me how this thing works would be helpful. Oh because you want I, you want me to invite you? I can send you an invite. <laughs> that would be great. Thank you. Yeah, I did this just this past Saturday. We got four new members of my club, and I, I'm thinking, how the heck am I going to get them going in Pathways now that we're on Zoom? Oh, boy. And then I, I set up a meeting afterward. I was able to walk each of them through and help them to select their paths. We could never do this before. You would, you know, you leave your meeting. Maybe you might think of uh, coming up with a one-on-one -on -one Zoom session. I did that once or twice, but it never occurred to me that I could just have a little Zoom class mm -hmm. for the new members and anybody else who needs help getting started. One of, the, one of the people had been with the club for six months and he'd been really slow about getting going on, on Pathways. So it was nice to bring him along too. Yeah, Larry. Uh, the other thing too that was uh, brought out in the survey of why they changed was it took a long time to get any recognition for doing your speeches because you had all these 10 speeches or you had all these things in the CO manual. And if now every level within uh, base camp, you as the VPE can uh, print out a certificate that they, and it's really a nice certificate. And so that's one way. And also there's uh, pathway pins for the different levels. But this kind of recognition, giving people more recognition, some of the others are sitting there saying, oh man, they, they just got another ribbon. They not got another certificate. I better get on the ball here. So that also helps people get more enthused about uh, working with pathways. When you think of it, if you're absolutely fair, most clubs have two speakers per week. That's 100 speaking slots per year for 20 members. Everybody gets to speak five times. If it's perfectly even, it takes two years to get your CC, the first level of recognition in the old program. Right. Now it's four speeches and you get that first level of rep recognition. And if somebody really, no, it's, you give, well, you give the same speech twice in the evaluation, right? Right. right. Yeah, so, so it's three speeches and an evaluation. You get that first level. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, more recognition makes people come out of the woodwork to get their recognition. Have you all seen the Pathways pins? Yeah, that's oh, pretty cool. Yeah. Let me see if I... Uh, talk amongst yourselves. I will find one. Yeah. Can Can you share screen and see the, if they're somewhere online? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know where to go to to find them. I can do that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, Larry, I'll show you. Yeah, I'll bring it up here and get in there and do that. And Come on, come on, come on, come on. All right, so back in the day, 
the pins were these little lapel pins you see here. Mm -hmm. And they were kind of tiny. And I, I hung all of them on my DTM metal here. I have to stop sharing my, stop my virtual background here. There we go. So I, I, I hang them on my DTM metal and show all the levels that I went through to earn it. But they were these tiny things and people would have to come up and squint and women, they couldn't wear them near their breasts because you knew what men were staring at. So they, <laughs> they decided that they would make them bigger. Uh, recently during the rebranding. So these are the ones from my, my second DTM. But this, this is the new presentation mastery pen. Yep, there you go. There you go. And it's big and it's really pretty. So you get, you get the pin and then you put these flags on that dangle underneath for each of the levels. You get level one through four. When you complete level five, you're proficient. Instead of a silver pin, you get a gold pin. So mine's in the mail right now. Good. And they're not that expensive. No, it's $8 for a pin. Eight dollars for a pen and it's two fifty for a level tag. And if you have it sent to somebody's home, there's eight dollars of shipping and handling. So it costs twice as much right now instead of getting a whole batch of them to one location. Uh, but it's worth the money. Uh, what I would recommend clubs do, in fact, because it's not that expensive, buy somebody their uh, pin for the path when they complete level one but also get them the flags for two, three, and four. That costs an additional, uh, set, or, well, it's $10 for all of the, the flags. When we start meeting in person again, you can have people swap them and exchange them. As they uh, complete level two, they'll trade that for the level one flag, and then you can pass them around to all the members in the club so it doesn't get too expensive. But right now, I would send them all the, the pins. It's just like in... Cub Scouts, when they used to give us the Weeblos, or no, the Bobcat yeah. pin, right? The first thing you did was put your Bobcat pin on and turn it upside down, and you had to do a good deed before you could wear it right side up. These pins are a great way to attract, uh, make members feel like they are part of the club, part of the organization. And then if you wear your pin around town, you know, you're standing in the line at the Walmart, somebody turns around, and says, well, what's that pin all about? And you get to talk about Toastmasters. The other thing, too, is you want to make a big deal in, in the presentation also. So don't just say, well, Joe got their pin today and give them the pin. Talk it up. Make it a big presentation as part of the meeting. And, uh, you know, everybody gets to applaud them and all that, so. Yeah, we have to come up with a ritual for Zoom that would be the equivalent of the rituals we did in, in the room. Because when we would give somebody a, a level award, we'd print out the certificate, like you're saying, Larry, uh, swap out the flag, and then we'd have them run around the table and give everybody a high five. Mm -hmm. uh, in, in another club, it's a much more formal process. But we, we absolutely have a ritual around it. We need a ritual for Zoom. So that's your homework for this week. Everybody come back with a perfect. Uh, let me make a comment. I, uh, I just uh, sent a certificate to everyone on Zoom. You know, we had one, one guy achieve a level. And I just uh, printed out the certificate. But then I saved it. I downloaded it. And then I emailed it to everybody in the group. Oh, okay. And... Uh, so everybody knows that he achieved that and they saw exactly what it is. And they, they would see his name on it. So they know that this yes. belonged to him. It's not as yes. if it's theirs, it's somebody else's. Right, yeah. that's a wonderful I, idea. Yeah, we're just, trying to yeah. figure out, we, we were giving in our meetings, um, <laughs> in our regular meetings, in our in-person meetings, we were giving best speaker, best evaluator and best table topics yeah. ribbons to people and that we're trying to figure out how to give ribbons to people during a virtual meeting 
And I would, I just went online and I Googled, you know, award ribbons. And, uh, you know, you can get a, a blue ribbon, a red ribbon, you know, you can get, you know, first place, second place ribbons. Um, a, a, um, a, you know, a, a virtual, you know, something that can be put on um, PowerPoint or put on a Word document and print it out and have that certificate or a ribbon for anybody. And there, you know, it doesn't cost anything to download it. And it doesn't cost anything to send it out by email. It's, Toastmaster has that too. Right. Yeah. You can find them on the Toastmaster site. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, well, I just did a, a presentation of someone in my netizens online club. She had uh, attained her DTM. Wonderful. And, and so what I did was I took uh, probably about five minutes of the meeting and had a whole scenario of talking about what she had to do, what she did to, to get to DTM. And then I shared my screen and showed the certificate to everybody. And she was just, she was blown away. She, she wasn't even thinking that we would do anything mm -hmm. except say congratulations, you know. But as the VPE, I wanted to, to make it a big thing like I normally would in, in person. And it went over really well. And, and it's actually up on our uh, YouTube that, uh, the PR person liked it, so they put it up on YouTube. So, yeah. So, Jenna, definitely take uh, Larry's lead here. Uh, best way to get people excited about the program is to make a huge deal about the people who are working the program. Mm -hmm. Even when they're doing their icebreaker, this is your uh, first foray into the path that's going to take you all the way. You know, uh, uh, a lot of hyperbole about yep. this. Wow, well, this is your third pathway speech it feels great doesn't it <laughs> you can lie to him it's okay <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> enthusiasm goes a long way yeah but is there some kind of notification or do they do they tell me when they get a level and then i have to root around for their uh path or how do i how do i know that they've achieved something in theory, when well, and this is uh, the difficulty is uh, the member has to know that they have to complete the evaluation at the end of the lesson, have to do that. That's what unlocks the uh, complete the level lesson. Then they have to do the complete the level lesson. When they do that, that's when it, the email is supposed to come to you. And even then, I don't always get those emails. I don't know why. We talked about that before. I don't know what the mechanism is uh, that is going to send it to the Vice President of Education. Uh, and we, we had some conjecture about why that is. Anyway, ideally they're going to tell you, I recommend that you check at least once every two weeks if you suspect that people might be winning awards and uh, failing to tell you. But pay attention to the lesson numbers when you schedule people to speak. You should always uh, be sure you've got the lesson number and ideally the purpose of the lesson in the agenda as well. So if you know that they're uh, working on level one, four, well, when they complete that speech, they will have uh, completed that level. It's going to be. I think that the, uh, I think that the, Basecamp manager is the one who gets the notice, and the Basecamp manager is usually the VPE, but it might be somebody different. Uh, well, mine was all locked out. I was completely locked out. I got, I got the buttons to show up, but the tutorials still don't work. So I'm, I'm still not quite able to access everything. Mm -hmm. And I'm not. I've looked at uh, all it says is anybody's completed anything in the last sixty days, and all of those boxes are empty. So I don't, I don't know if they're supposed to be stuff in there or if it's just because it's not looking back far enough I, i'm not sure what i'm looking at all i see is a blank page right now so I'm, I'm i'm just hoping to know when somebody's clicked something that i'll get some kind of notification so i can follow through with this other stuff You're supposed to that's Matthew, i've got i've got a um a set of slides i could send to you that shows awesome. everything uh complete screenshots of what to do what the member needs to do and then what you need to do 
Oh, that would be uh, awesome. Maybe I'll just send that. I'll just send that to you, Dennis, and then you can. Oh well, no, actually, <laughs> unless there's a group email here. Yeah, Hans, I I, I stole all your good ideas. Uh, so I I took uh, the links that you had. I enhanced it a little bit with mine. I, I've got a page. I, I thought I had shared it here before. I can share it again. Uh, but yeah, I, I definitely reference Hans' uh, set of slides, and I'll be using them in the training this week. Okay. Yeah. Can you, if you if you want that from Dennis, I guess you could put your email in the chat box. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll put a let, link. Let me, let me. Um, I'll just send it to you again, Dennis, because it. I think it changed since then. Um, I'll I'll send you the updated copy. It would okay. be nice to have the current info. Okay, I'm going to put a link in the chat that is a link to a set of uh, great links for vice presidents of education that also happen to include, uh, yeah, you probably updated the slides for the new interface on the, uh, the landing page, right, for the users? Because that, um, that changed in May. You mean in Pathways? Yes. Uh -huh in the actual pathways interface let me see okay i'll, I'll check um helpful okay. links for vice president's education there, go. there it is and you know what I, I should put that into the invitation to this meeting i, I don't have any <laughs> secrets that i'm trying to hide from people but that particular well, thing, well what what i'm showing you know, the first step, obviously, like you mentioned, is the, the member has to mark it as complete. And they do that by going into their education transcript. Um, so that's the starting place. And then they, they select the level that they had been working on and they launch it. Um, and then they mark it as complete. And as soon as they do that, uh, it will say pending approval and the VPE will get a notification. This is not the one that I wanted. It's actually, and it can be not only the VPE, but also the secretary and the president can do it. Right. The other thing that we discovered in, in my club, we have, um, we have not just free toast toast we have you know you have the toastmasters website and the toastmasters gets you a uh, website gets you onto pathways but in order to link to uh, the email addresses for the vpe the vpm and and you know the officers of the club you have to have a free toast host account and you have to put your officers in there and uh, most recently if you have a new member they have to opt in We've had some problems in the past with getting people to opt in. And so they're not getting email. They don't get email. They don't know what's happening. They don't get copies of the agendas. They don't get notices of the meetings and they just simply go away because they, they think we've forgotten them. <laughs> so um, we had to figure out some way to uh, correct that disconnect. We also use easy speak instead of free toast toast to, um, to organize our meetings, to do our agendas. So we have been, we have been work, you know, trying to work with these three different um, websites and it's a bit confusing. It's especially a bit confusing for people who get frustrated easily with, with the internet. So between, between the Toastmasters website, the Pathways, um, Pathways interface, the free Toast host requirements and, uh, and easy speak, um, it's a lot for a brand new person to handle. So I, I think that having, you know, having a mentor, having some one person walk that person through is a wonderful idea. But I also think it's a really good idea to have some sort of a, a training meeting some other time, other than the regular, um, the regular Toastmasters meeting that, that, might, uh, that might help. I think that it might bring some excitement and some interest back into some of our members. It's a wonderful idea. Stephanie, Thank you. Uh, I Stephanie, when- Very quickly, and then we'll continue the discussion. These are the slides that Hans was talking about that I'm showing right now. You, you see, they got these huge arrows pointing to exactly what the user would have to do. Open the curriculum. 
activate level completion, click launch, click mark complete, and then they wait. And it's your steps where you go in and look for pending requests. This is what you're saying, Matthew. Now, you're going in there, you've, you're finding this page empty, but if there were something to approve, you would just click the green arrow here, the green check mark, and, and you've approved it. You put in, this was approved by Matthew, great job, we love you, Toastmasters is your God, and submit that, you're done on the Pathways side. Then you come over to Club Central, this is the part uh, a lot of clubs are doing one or the other, but not both. You come to Club Central, you click, uh, yeah, Leadership Central, go to Club Central, submit education awards, find the member's name, select their education program, and then submit the award there. So this is, this is the part uh, that, if, if you're not aware of it, it's easy to miss it. Yeah. And so I, I would click on this pop-up menu and if it were uh, Jill and she has just completed uh, level three, then it would be uh, presentation mastery level three. I select it, bing, and she's got it. The thing, uh, I've talked about this before, <laughs> Don't go back and check to see if she's also got Presentation Mastery 4 available, because she does. As soon as you submit one of these awards, the next one then becomes available. It's got no tie-in with the Pathways uh, software. Two completely different animals. That's why you have to go to two places to submit these awards. Now, that's because, uh, Gia, you were saying that someone in your club was familiar with the platform that this runs on. Uh, that's true, Basecamp. Uh, there, there are many other educational institutions that use this same software. So that's separate from the Toastmasters site where we submit the educational awards. Right. Thank you for letting me interrupt. Uh, please continue your thought. Oh. Oh, hi there. Um, I, I was just uh, trying to address uh, Stephanie with the, um, the opt-in message that uh, Free Toast Host generates. And they do it as, as part of a security night. And we've had members, new members who kind of creep out or either that or it goes into their spam folder so they never see it. So what we've been doing uh, or what I've been doing is uh, I just composed a, a happy, friendly message, just letting them know, hey, we enrolled you. You're going to get this weird message and it's okay. Just say yes. And once you do that, you can sign in and you know be part of our club, and that usually seems to to at least it alerts them that there's a message that was sent from the club, and they can go dig it out of their spam folder or what have you, um, and j just one way of getting around it because that that message is really strangely worded. It's kind of a scary message because it, it makes it sound like your name and address and everything is now in our system. And uh, anyways, it's, so that's how we countered that one. Right. Yeah. I agree. It's a, a, we, we, we had the problem with our current president. She never opted in and she kept not opting in. And so she wasn't accepted. And so we couldn't put her in as president. <laughs> <laughs> because free toast host wouldn't accept her name as president because she wasn't on the list. Oh my God. <laughs> That's tough. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. <laughs> are, you guys, are you guys talking about the opt in to receive marketing communications? No, no, no. Just the one on free toast host. Oh, well that's, that's yeah. If your club has a site on that. Yes. Right. And, and we use that to sign up for roles and uh, we oh, yeah. send out agendas. And, and so it's just, just central to our communication. And uh, if, uh, if you're not on that list, then you can't sign up for, for roles or be part of, you, you just won't be listed on the agenda. So, yeah. Right. Okay. I thought you were, I thought this um, discussion was about pathways, but 
I don't think there's a connection between free toast host and pathways. Um, mm -hmm. But no, it's something that uh, Stephanie had yeah. brought up with the different things that right. had a with new member to negotiate. Yeah, yeah. Different, different, different websites are different, and, and, and that's correct. They don't talk to each other. Yeah, but um, to Dennis's point, if you are the VPE, uh, you would need to opt in to get an email from Basecamp notifying you that a member has completed something, right? Yes. So I, I think um, some people might have opted out because they don't want junk mail and then suddenly they become a VPE and they're wondering why they don't get any emails. So. No. Miller, you, you, know, you're, you don't have to, when you become VPE, uh, TI knows that and it sets it up in base camp and all that. You don't have to opt into anything else. Whatever, whatever email you have in Toastmasters International, that's where that message is going to go. So you got to make sure when you're the VPE, if you have more than one, some people have a, a Toastmaster only email and their own personal email, things like that. So you have to make sure you have the right email in Toastmasters International. You, these other systems aren't connected to that, so you don't have to opt in just for, just to make sure you get that. Another what, thing I wanted to quick a what? quick ta tangential point here uh, after you, Larry. So do yours, and then I'm going to take a tangent. Go. I, uh, I I get questions every once in a while, like, well, I really want to talk about ABC, but in my path that doesn't really fit for the next speech. And in the old pathways oh, seems like a good target. You couldn't you couldn't see anything above. I mean it's kind of just like pathetic. But now you can. So what I do is I said, well let's go look in the rest of your path, level two, level three, level four. Oh, die faster. A uh, speech in there that would fit your ABC. Uh, and so you'll yeah, have to talk about that. Like that too. So uh, be aware that you can go through their uh, levels and find a, another speech. And so they can do a level four speech, even though. Not on me, though, right? I'm yeah. done. Uh, I mean, I can't kill Jill, again, <laughs> thank you. Uh, one of the things about these sites, Free Toast Host and... Uh, WordPress for Toastmasters. Easy, easy, easy speak. speak, yeah. Yeah, Easy Speak, there you go. Who in the club needs to know how to set people up, create accounts, get people ready to use those? Who is the officer who must know how to do this? VPE. All of them. Every of single them. officer yeah, in the true. club, because somebody's going to get hit by a bus and suddenly nobody knows what to do with free toast host or anything like that. So uh, I definitely insist that everybody tell me how to use all of the different systems. Give me all the passwords. I'm not mm -hmm. going to run off to Rio with the secret passwords of the club, but if somebody needs to take a vacation or somebody uh, gets the stomach flu one week, we can't have all business stop because nobody knows how to get into the system. So don't, don't let the VPPR tell you you're not allowed or the sergeant at arms say you're not allowed. Everybody should be allowed. Yeah, Matthew. Uh, actually, I missed the last part of what Larry was saying uh, because we had uh, background noise and so I was like blocking out. So I, I, I missed the last part. You were talking about taking a speech from level four and then I don't know wherever you see it after that. Well, let's say you have a, uh, a member that's on, on level two and they're supposed to be doing whatever level two speech says. But they say, uh, you know, I've got this burning subject called ABC that I want to talk about and give a speech on then you can go up to level two, three, four, and say, okay, it fits into this one. 
and so they can give that speech then and there. Is that so, something that's opened up since the yes. first? Okay, all yes. right. Because I yeah, I remember that we, we were kind of locked into like had to, yeah. had to open yep. the door every little door as you went. Okay, we finally so heard that, the cry from the wilderness. I know we can see <laughs> further, but we can actually operate further as well. Okay. You can you can now see the whole lesson. The only thing you can't do is take credit for it at level right. four until you're up on level four. So right. you can do the speech, save the evaluation, go through level two and three. When you get to level four, bing, you've already got it done. And a good example would be is if you were putting together a podcast for something at work or a, uh, you know, right. doing a video for something on the job, you could uh, use it toward the, the uh, lesson later on as long as you get an evaluation through Toastmasters. So mm -hmm. yeah, you definitely want everybody wants to take advantage of uh, anything where you can get dual credit for these kinds well, of things. We, we get a lot of people doing running, dry running their work stuff through us. So this is another source of a lot of speeches we've done. Yeah. That's, and, and, and as a VPE, we have to keep track of that in, on the agenda, giving the, you know, the, the project title and the, the um, you know, the level and all that stuff, because even if it's out of sequence, you need to have, you need to be able to go back later and take a look at your agendas and find out whether or not the person actually did them. Well, we, we haven't had to worry about that up until now because yeah. nobody's known to look ahead that we, uh, <laughs> last, last time any of us tried to get in there, we, we just kind of hit the wall. And so we knew that we had to finish this level to get to the next one. It so works all now. This is, all this it works is now. We fix right. that. Yeah. They fixed that, yeah. I think, six months, a year ago. Well, be, be careful also, Stephanie, because uh, there aren't a lot of people who are going to come in here and try and, you know, commit fraud against Toastmasters by lying and saying that they did a speech. I, I think we can mostly take people at their word. If they have to lie to get through a path, everyone's going to know by the time they get to the end of the path, they may have uh, worked all the way through it, but it didn't stick. So I, I wouldn't worry about, you know, being some kind of Toastmasters police to verify that they've done their awards. Mostly you can take them at their word. It's only if you find somebody who's being kind of shameless about it, where they say that they gave a speech last week, you were in the meeting last week and they didn't, <laughs> that, that's when you might uh, raise a flag. Other than that, I think that people are going to be pretty honest because it's a self-education organization. Well, we are at the end of another great hour. I thank you people so much for coming back week after week. Matthew, uh, I really enjoy the fact that you and I have a different perspective here because I think it's instructive for everybody to listen to the dialogue. And we've got, I guess, at least two more weeks, huh? Uh, so I hope to see you all again. We'll see you on Saturday at the VPE yeah. at, at, at TLI. So I, I, I look at I look up at the D fifty seven TM to find out how to get into the Saturday meeting. Yes. And Before is there? And you said there was another follow up meeting, uh, talk, talking about how to do the, how to how to navigate pathways. No, that's the same day. Same day. Yeah, but yeah. the follow up meeting is like right after the first meeting. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So well, the well, TMI well, is, is from eight o'clock in the morning to one o'clock, and in yeah. there you'll get the uh, you'll get trained as VPE and you'll go to the other uh, sections. Block out your entire morning. <laughs> All right. And then the, uh, and then the, uh, how to use uh, pathways comes after, after 1 PM. No, no, no. It's within 1 PM. It's within eight to one. Oh, okay. All right. All righty. It's at eight o'clock. You're going to have the uh, seat now here. When you go to the site I'm sharing here, summer, 2020 TLI, you click that, and that's going to take you to the registration link. Okay? So the right. first thing you'll see when you go to the, that uh, URL. All right. Well, we got a meeting tomorrow morning or noon, so I'll let them all know that this is coming. Fantastic. Right. Yeah, we'll have an hour and a half of VPE training. So the first 45 minutes, I'm going to focus on hard skills, like how to navigate pathways. The second 45 minutes, we talk about soft skills. A lot of the things that we've talked about here, but there will be more VPE in the room 
And as we engage them, you're, you're going to hear a lot more ideas than just me. And my assistant will be the lovely Jill Van Slyke. So we're looking forward to doing that training on Saturday. All right. And I'll make my uh, I'll make sure my son isn't doing a game during our training. <laughs> that would be Thank good. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis.